Um, to be honest with you, one of my worries about like the position I'm in at the minute is because I don't feel like I'm built. Okay, I think we're recording. Six months working in tech, my update. Okay, so I've been working in tech now as an IT technician for six months. How is it going? Just come back from work. Let's just do a straight update because I want this channel to be basically, obviously, my journey on becoming a network engineer, navigating this entire space. As someone who has just recently passed the CCNA, uh, which I did in April this year, and we're in June. No, we're not. We're in July. Like so, six months in tech. Let me let me speak from the perspective of someone who is going into the tech field, the industry, really focused on building their experience with a lot of momentum and just trying to soak everything up. So. I should point out, I have had some technical roles in the past, but they've been a little bit more generalized. Now I'm solely focused on network engineering. Not sure entirely what specific specialty I want to go into, but this is where we're at. We passed CCNA this year in 2025 got my tech job here in Australia before passing my CCNA um, as an IT network systems technician and now we are like six months in. So how is it going? Uh, okay. I think it's going okay. Let me tell you the good bits um, about moving into this job and moving into sort of IT and all that sort of stuff. So first and foremost, we're in IT, we're in the industry that we want to be in uh, and we are in and amongst all the kit and equipment that we need to be among, uh, in and amongst, if that makes sense. We're, we're in a good environment. Um, and I've also been picking up a lot of skills which I sort of overlooked to, to do with hardware issues for end users like PCs, you know, when a PC is coming to the end of its life, you know, um, upgrading PCs and salvaging parts from PCs and yeah, just fixing those physical issues for end users. So I've enjoyed that. Where I find a little bit frustrating, I think, with my job, um, and I think a lot of people will find this, when you pass something like CCNA, um, you know, it's not like you know <laughs> everything or anything like that. It's just that you've proved you've got a, an understanding of networking. Um, and you immerse yourself in that material for so long, trying to learn it, trying to pass the exam. When you get a job, you just want to do any, everything specifically related to the topics that you've learned about, spanning tree, routing, switching, IP addresses, subnetting. Um, and when you're not doing that, you get a little bit like, wish I was doing like building upon all the CCNA knowledge that I'd, I'd acquired. However, that's only a small picture, isn't it, of the in the grand scheme of things? Because, by the way, this video is not not edited at all. It's generally just a, it's just a sit down and talk. But it's just a small piece of the puzzle, isn't it? Because this is the real world where we have to like I said, fix hardware issues. Um, fix cables. Software crashing on a PC. Software being an issue. Reinstalling software. Um, refreshing hardware. And, you know, there's all the little things that I've kind of overlooked um, which I found useful to be doing um, but like I said, I do get like, I, I do just want to jump straight into like, I just want to carry on learning more about spanning tree. And, you know, I want to be amongst the VLANs and start, you know, configuring switches and solving routing problems. And But yeah, so you can also, like I said, when you overlook certain things that aren't in your CCNA, you can be humbled quite quickly because it's like, 
just because you've got your CCNA doesn't mean that you're like going to come in like, oh, yeah, I know to do this, I know to do that. No, you, you need experience to build the time to, 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 to add more value to the team that you're with. I think um, when you are looking for jobs, though, and you're starting to acquire a little bit of experience in that sort of level one, level two field, and you have a cert like, I don't know whether it's CompTIA or CCNA, you look at sort of the job adverts that get thrown up, and there are so many tech jobs in Sydney. There's so many tech jobs in Australia. Um, some of the things that they ask for are like a list as long as your arm. Um, and it becomes clear, I think, when you're looking at a job advert, after you've looked for a while, the people who have written it, whether they know what they're talking about or not, um, some things are just like a massive wish list. Like if you've got, if you found that type of person who can, who knows all those things inside out, and can do this and can do that, and you're only going to pay them seventy five thousand dollars Australian. Um, yeah, go for it. But some of the some of the job adverts just don't make sense. I think overall, moving into tech for me has been definitely a positive, definitely the worthwhile, you know, the right move to make because I, I can see myself building upon all the experience and the knowledge that I've got. And I'm already now starting to, well, I'll have started my next certification. My next certification is Cisco DevNet. Um, and DevNet, why DevNet? So, I was looking at, I didn't want to lose the momentum of studying after CCNA, you know, and, and not do anything for a long time. I, I wanted to keep the momentum going. Not that I'm trying to sort of jump the gun and just think I can get ahead of everyone just through certs. I know that's not the case. But I was looking at what certification to take. And I thought, okay, the options are Cisco CCMP, um, or a more specialist specific cert, okay, solely focusing on, on one thing, or CC, Cisco DevNet is what I meant to say. And the reason why I went for Cisco DevNet really was I'm not getting swept up in all the whole AI thing. I think it's been massively overhyped. But what I have been seeing is automation creeping in, creeping in a little bit more in the job adverts, even in this sort of year that I've been looking at job adverts. And this sort of seems to have come down the ladder a little bit where they talk about automation. Now the, I've seen some adverts for level two network engineer um, with automation skills. So, you know, wanting to know about Python and stuff like that. So I thought, okay, maybe, maybe I should, maybe, maybe I should do DevNet. Not so much because it's creeping in now, but because I think in the future, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot more job adverts asking for some sort of automation experience. And I think with AI, you know, I went down a massive rabbit hole for probably a couple of months about AI. Um, and we always keep up to date or in touch with what's happening in the AI world. Um, it's, I mean, it moves so fast, you just get fatigued. And that's exactly what happened. I was just getting fatigued. And uh, there was like some videos from some well-known creators talking about how it's going to change network engineers. But then I was thinking, and I was listening to a podcast, and it also got me thinking about a lot of the networks that we deal with, public sector networks, okay, so networks for governments, councils, all that sort of stuff, they're not geared up for AI at all. They're legacy networks that just get upgraded, upgraded by the people that work there for maybe a year or two years. And core networking skills are always going to be needed absolutely so that's why i think ccna is a great thing to do but i think okay if they can't harness ai maybe they'll try and harness automation more um at the lower levels so that's why i've gone for the cisco devnet and funnily enough cisco have rebranded it as the ccna automation 
So that for me was a bit of a sign that I, I am doing the right thing. They've they've seen that they need to rebrand it. They haven't changed the material for the associate, but they must see something in the future to give it more value in terms of rebranding the name at the associate level. I think they have made the changes on the, the CCMP because it's going to be CCMP automation and CCIE automation. Um, God, I mean, I and I will talk about how that has actually started my next cert. So I've restarted my subscription on CBT Nuggets. Now I use CBT Nuggets for learning the material on CCNA. I think it cost me about 100 Australian dollars a month. Now it's, it's worth it because you pay for the training so you want to take it seriously. Like you make the effort to sit down and do the studying. So that's why I did my subscription again for CBT Nuggets. The first week of learning DevNet really for me has been um, really hard, like really hard, just because I'm not paying lip surface to some of the sort of things where we talk about getting your environment ready. So you need to, I'm using a MacBook, so obviously, you know, you've got Python on there, you know, you, you're working with Git, you're on GitHub, you're using um, VS Code, and these tools and software and things like that, um, yeah, I know what they are, and I've heard about them, and I can make an account on them, but do I know how to use them properly? And they're going to be, you know, used heavily on the DevNet course. So really this week for me has been just basically watching tutorials on GitHub, watching tutorials on VS Code, truly understanding what Git is. Now, Git is, apart from in the English language, a bit of a derogatory slur, calling someone a Git, um, it's a way to track version control. And I didn't really know this um, properly. I just heard it. Yeah, you can type it on this command line. Don't know really what it does, but yeah. So you have Git and then obviously you've got the hub as well, GitHub together. So Git is tracking version control, I would say. You've got a file, it's gonna be changed and it's gonna be changed again and Git is a way of tracking those changes and staging them, you know, once you're happy with it and committing them. Um, and Hub, Hub, GitHub is essentially just a, a central repository where those files and changes live for multiple people to collab and uh, and download and change and upload and so. It's been a week of basically just watching videos on what exactly is GitHub, what exactly is Git, and how do I actually use VS Code properly, the software, because, you know, I've probably watched the same video four times with VS Code, just to make sure that, you know, I know the functionalities of it and all sorts of stuff. So that's pretty much where I'm at with my own personal training after CCNA. I'm also trying to bring my home lab up to scratch. I've got my home lab under this desk, which I will do a video about. Three Cisco Rubis, three Cisco switches. I've got a, a, a project at the minute, but it, I, my current working day is like, um, what time are we on? My current working day is like seven till half three. So I do work, come back, I need fresh air. I need to go for a walk because sitting behind computer screens and stuff like that just kills me. Um, good job working in, working in tech. But yeah, you need like a bit of a release during the day. And then obviously my fiance, the dog here, I can't just jump straight onto my home lab and then also do Cisco DevNet. So you don't get much time in normal life, do you? So I'm sort of divvying up my time between learning Cisco DevNet and also keeping up with my home lab. Um, to be honest with you, one of my worries about like the position I'm in at the minute is because I don't feel like I'm building too much on the CCNA skills 
I feel like I'm having to put the hours in maybe at home with this home lab, um, which is a little bit frustrating. But yeah, I think tech's just frustrating, full stop, isn't it? This is me rambling on about six months into my tech job after passing CCNA. I've got more videos to come. And uh, yeah, I think next one I'll probably do home lab, just crack it out, maybe some live streams as well. But yeah, take it easy.